Hi, everyone. Uh, I know the snack break is next and we will all be happy, but uh, uh, take a few more minutes with me, bear with me, and I will introduce you a new uh, innovative idea, uh, the next iteration of the internet, also uh, referred as Web 3.0 or Internet 3.0. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the building blocks and all the new possibilities and capabilities uh, that the internet uh, will bring. Uh, so let's start. So with, it all started 13 years ago, uh, 2008, with this little white paper by a pseudonymous uh, cryptographer named Satoshi Nakamoto. Nakamoto on nine pages described the building blocks of this next generation of internet applications and so on. Uh, he, uh, he described some technologies that will uh, transform the internet and all the applications that we're using. So the first, the first thing that he described was a new innovative data structure. So this data structure was completely new, it, it's, it's, it's nothing that we have seen before. Uh, you heard, I guess you heard of, uh, you, you're familiar with blockchain, you heard of the term, it was a big buzzword uh, a few years ago. So what is a blockchain? A blockchain is a database, a new kind of database that is storing information like in cryptocurrencies transactions. So this is our, those are our really important data sets that we need uh, in a kind of way uh, securing really uh, secure, securing uh, and storing really secure and uh, those uh, blockchains are immutable. What does it mean? That no one can just like that uh, changing, editing and managing these uh, blockchains, okay? This is the first building block. So the next iteration of decentralized applications will under the hood having this uh, blockchain databases. Not often mentioned, but the real invention of uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, this cryptographer, this mysterious figure that uh, we still don't know who is, who is it today. Uh, the real innovation is the consensus algorithm. What is a consensus algorithm? So we uh, have this, uh, in computer science there were uh, really, really uh, problem that was unsolvable until consensus algorithm. Uh, we have here computers that are completely uh, distributed and entities that don't trust each other. And how can some of these computers come to agreement? With consensus. So consensus are our set of rules without a ruler. Uh, you see here, for instance, let's say we, we're, uh, we're running a cryptocurrency ledger like blockchain. We see the first device is uh, adding a new block with transaction, with ownership, uh, exchange, and so on. To, uh, and everything is synchronized to a network where entities don't trust each other. And they don't have rely on trust. We are, uh, if you want to be a part of a blockchain network, you need to follow the rules that the consensus algorithm giving you. And of course, there are many other things that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto described in this paper. For example, uh, cryptography. We are encrypting this data uh, on blockchains. We see here some of the correct characteristics. It's uh, blockchain systems are open, which means this is open source software. If you want, you can take, for instance, uh, Bitcoin blockchain, it's open source software, and you can make, your, make, make up your own cryptocurrency with different parameters, so a different variation of Bitcoin. And you can call it TEDx coin and, and uh, use it only for, for an event like that. Uh, what means decentralized? So for decades now, we are having this paradigm with client and server. So you're, for instance, surfing the web, with a web browser and you're pinging uh, uh, a distance server, right? Uh, here, it's not, not functioning like that. So we have many different hundreds, thousands, even 10,000 of computer that are acting and like, like one big computer. Censorship resistant, 
in cryptocurrency, which is really important, we have uh, transactions that cannot be interrupted or stopped. So we have unstoppable transaction and exchange of information. Borderless, we see that cryptocurrencies in the past few years are really popular. Uh, everyone is welcome to use it voluntarily. You can open a little app that, called, uh, that is called uh, cryptocurrency wallet or Bitcoin wallet. You can store money in those systems. You can trade it, buy it, sell it, do whatever you want, speculate it if you want. But this is not the main goal of cryptocurrency. And neutral, everyone can use it. It doesn't matter, are you a boy or girl, an adult, a teenager, everyone can uh, use it. Even automated bots and software can, can hook up to the blockchain and do something with those things. So yes, blockchain as a database and consensus algorithms as our rules. Together, we have our first application and this, this is called cryptocurrency. I know uh, speculating is still the first network effect and people are trying to make some gains, but this is not the point of cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is really agnostic. Everyone can use it. We can include so many people that don't have even a bank account. And I think the last what I read is that over 100 million people in the world are unbanked and underbanked. So what can we do with cryptocurrency? We can really include all those people who have, haven't, for, for, for instance, haven't an ID, ID card. They don't have a banking account or a banking branch in their little town. So we can include, because most of the people today have smartphones or even feature phones. Uh, cryptocurrencies you can send and receive uh, even through SMS if you want. Satellite, radio waves, uh, even emojis. We can encrypt and, and take a few lines of Python programming code and transform, convert Bitcoin transactions and cryptocurrency transactions to emojis if you want. So with other words, this is an unstoppable uh, payment system that is really meant to be for the internet. So we will have, maybe it's not Bitcoin, maybe it will be uh, other cryptocurrency that will be the native currency of the biggest nation in the world, the internet nation. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with smart contracts. So this, this is a concept introduced three decades ago by a cryptographer named Nick Sabo. Uh, smart contracts uh, are little programs on the blockchain. So we can, uh, to our tr transactions, give some conditions and triggers and automate transactions. Let me give you an example. Imagine in the future a social network where you're in fully control of all your data. Everything that you do is is on your little crypto wallet. And if you want to interact and if you want to share your data with a social media platform, you can do it. So in return, you can again uh, make some gains and you can monetize your data. I think this is a more fair way to do social media interaction with all the uh, uh, social media, media networks out there. Oh, this is a cool. This is a cool concept that popped up also a few years ago, a decentralized uh, uh, autonomous organization. Those are digital companies and digital organization with participants that can know each other uh, and don't have to know each other. We can scale now organizations through the internet. It can be that we have 2,000 2, or even 200,000 employees in this digital organizations. And for instance, we can uh, make some votings and participate. Everyone can participate in decision making of this digital company. So a true democratic way and a more fair way to do business online. Decentralized finance, also known as DeFi. So of course, with blockchain technology and consensus algorithm, we can make things from the past, like a banking infrastructure, having on our little devices, okay?
But why not come up with completely new architectures and topologies? We see here today, thanks to blockchain-based uh, uh, banking and finance services, we have micropayments, we have microloans, you can have decentralized exchanges and uh, exchanging cryptocurrency from one to another completely autonomous without middlemen. Non-fungible tokens, are there any artists here? Did you maybe uh, try to launch your own NFT token, non-fungible token? So those, those are, those are uh, similar to cryptocurrencies, but they are unique and non-interchangeable, which means we can have now digital art, digital co collections, and you can prove and verify that you are the owner, the first creator on the internet. You know, online, everything is a copy, more or less. But with this technology, we can really prove that you are the one who created a 3D sculpture and similar things. In the public sector, I don't know if this is science fiction or not, but imagine that, you can, we, that we can uh, eradicate waiting on lines, filling out dozens of documents and papers, and you can interact with your governmental institution completely online. Everything is highly secure and encrypted on the blockchain. For instance, you have a new property to register, or you want uh, to fill out some tax returns, or maybe you're a senior citizen who wants just uh, to receive a social welfare payment. Everything is possible with this technology, those open uh, ledgers that are distributed across the internet. Healthcare also. Uh, imagine that you have all your medical records in your wallet and you're in fully control. You're visiting a hospital for some reason in any country, it doesn't matter. Uh, it is fully encrypted and secure. And if you want that, to give it to your doctor or a medical specialist, it's, it's uh, all completely automated and you don't have uh, to worry, will I lose my device, and so on. Everything is stored on those ledgers. Ownership. Uh, this one is also interest is interesting. A few, a few years ago, I went to a conference where uh, there was a demo. People presented a web shop where you can sell real estate. I thought it was unrealistic, but we see today that even in Croatia, we have... Uh, micro, you can be micro-investors in real estate. For instance, a big co-working space and you can, starting from a few hundred bucks, you can be the co-owner and micro-investor of real estate. This is really cool, uh, especially for young people who are buying their first real estate. Why not try something like that so to be a co-owner of a property? Smart car, uh, contacts in uh, apartment rentals. So tourism, a big topic here in Croatia. Uh, imagine that you have a smart lock on your apartment that you rent. Everything can be autonomous and automatically uh, done by smart contracts. So smart contracts are our logic and you can put the key or a pin into a smart contract. On the other side, the visitor will put money and you said, let's, let's make it tomorrow at 10 p.m. You can come and the pin will be ready on your device and you can open automatically the apartment that I'm renting to you. Without middlemen, without lawyers and expensive uh, real estate brokers. Internet of Things. In a few years, what will happen? So many devices will be on the internet, like your refrigerator, your, your uh, driverless car and so on. Uh, if we have this old paradigm with the client and just a centralized server or data center, it can be that someone is hacking my refrigerator. It doesn't matter. Maybe he, the, the, the bad actor will, uh, will I don't know, um, order 10 gallons of milk. That's, that's not that bad. But imagine that someone is hacking your driverless car. Okay, this is a dangerous idea, a dangerous situation. So what blockchain can prevent, it can uh, 
add a new security layer to all our applications and devices that will be 24-7 online on the internet. Also, what we can do with blockchain is renting computational power or a hard drive. Imagine that you have a terabyte uh, free of hard drive. You can connect to a blockchain and try to make some little gains, some micropayments by renting out uh, your hard drive, a, a few terabytes of, of uh, space on your disk, okay? Or I don't know, you can do the same thing with internet. You can be a micro internet service provider and provide internet and in return you get again some gains. Blockchain is keeping track of every transaction that you're, that's landing in your pocket. And the last one, metaverse also uh, often often spoken in the, in the media, is the metaverse. So we're creating digital worlds, games. What we can now have with blockchain is digital economy, virtual economies, e economic activity inside the game. So you can, uh, for instance, buy, sell, trade in-game items. You can be the owner of a digital real, real estate. You can also, uh, I don't know, you can rent your billboards, add ad spaces and so on, uh, on big brands, okay? So this is all possible with blockchain and the other technologies. It all started with cryptocurrency, but it goes beyond cryptocurrency. Uh, the world we're going to is, of course, digital, completely autonomous and automated, and it will be run on blockchain-based systems. So should you be in, involved in those technology? Absolutely. So you, everyone is uh, welcome to innovate and build your own stuff on the blockchain. And you can uh, come up with completely new architectures and topologies never seen before on top of the internet. So uh, why not make a digital monument? Maybe your digital creation will be used by millions of people in 100 years maybe even. Thank you so much.